hosting the Redbirds of Illinois State. Stay tuned. We have it for you coming up next. For wrestling action in our first wrestling telecast of the year, the Huskies of Northern Illinois carry a two and six record into this match. Illinois State five and five on the year. We're getting ready for our first match. Our referee tonight is Tom Hennef, and we are underway with Kirk Jurenek in action against Tony Calderon. We also like to welcome Coach Wayne Miller, the former coach at DeKalb High School, is going to be with us to help us analyze. Here's the lifting attempt by uh, Jurenek right under the gate. Worked those legs, they went off of the mat, and so they will go back in uh, an even position here. Calderon tried to get a lift, but it seems like he was just a little bit too short to get it quite high enough. Absolutely, he had a lot of pressure on him, and that was a front headlock by Jernick. And that more or less blocked an attempt at the legs there. Uh, it we'll be talking a lot about how the wrestlers change levels coach to try to determine the way that they will be attacking uh, there's these particular uh, and these guys are so quick I would assume they do it as much as anybody absolutely the better the competitor the more they do change level and try some penetration well we won't see any more quickness than we have these right here these two guys are pretty well locked up did he score on that he was off the mat he was off the mat as he was rolled over and so there was no scoring, so they will uh, start both of them in the up position. That was very close. It's an excellent move and excellent counter at the same time. So we have Jernick and Calderon. Tony is a freshman. He's from Homewood, Illinois. Uh, learned his wrestling under Bill Murphy. And uh, he is a guy who works with this uh, uh, outstanding young women's wrestler in the Northern Illinois team, and that we've been hearing so much about Brenda Maxey. No points scored on that. We have a scoreless, uh, we have a shutout going through the first minute 20 seconds of these match, of this match. Nearly, uh, that time Calderon nearly got your neck over. Calderon's got his leg in there. Yeah, he's so trying to set up. We uh, still have a neutral position. Uh, uh -huh. They were attempting a quarter Nelson. And two points is scored for Northern Illinois. Uh, Calderon as he was able to roll him over so he gets fired for the takedown. And an escape. And in a, so the points are piling up for the Huskies here as uh, it is now five to nothing. That was an excellent Ramby roll executed by Jernick. So Jernick is uh, very effective coming out of the gate. I didn't notice that they've posted the score uh, backwards, I guess, as he is uh, out in front. We have 36 seconds remaining here in this first period. This is the correct score. Oh, it is at yeah, five to nothing. Calderon's on top. 26 seconds remaining here. And uh, stalling point has been awarded. So uh, there's a good stand up as uh, Calderon tried to uh, stand out of it. Down to 10 seconds remaining. Jernak trying to stand up out of that. And it looked like it'll end this way as far as the first period is concerned. Uh, the first uh, period of three for each of these uh, matches. So it's a five to nothing lead for the Huskies as Calderon put a couple of quick scores on and has a uh, 5 nothing lead here through the first period of this match. We'll find uh, as, as the matches progress, Bill and Ann, that uh, the smaller the wrestler, the more speed is involved. And as we get up higher, it'll be more strength, obviously. Calderon starts at the disadvantage here. Trying to uh, sit out, nearly got rolled up. Boy, he put a lot of pressure on, really stayed on top of him there and did not allow him to uh, get his leg out. Good reversal. Good attempt at one. Calderon is trying to fight it. Doesn't want to get over. Now he's over on his back. And, uh, no scoring done on it. He didn't have him down long enough. The referee indicated two-point near fall. Okay. So that uh, going to uh, Calderon or to Jurnek, and he has his first two points of the match. With that, and it's a 5-2 match. Northern Illinois will be in the darker uh, uniforms here. The second and third period are two minutes in length, and at the high school level, they're all two minutes, but the 
first period is three in the college level. There's a uh, one point going to Calderon uh, for an escape there. Calderon. So that makes it six to two. And a stalemate is ruled as the wrestlers got so locked up that they, and it reaches a point like that often, doesn't it, Coach, where you just... Very often we need know. to get some action going and the referee can call stalemate and put them both on their feet. And where they're so locked up, it's only very difficult to get out. So and there's going to be a timeout here as the uh, officials will look uh, over their personnel. Let's take a look at the, I think it was the first point scored in this match, Coach. Okay, that was a roll through executed and now uh, Calderon has secured what is called a Granby roll. Mm -hmm. uh, he secures the arm and leg and he is now getting back points. All right, it is six to two. Both wrestlers will start up here. We have a little over a minute remaining in the second period. Yeah. Calderon has been out the last four matches for NIU with torn ligaments in his knee, so this is his first match back. He's a hard-nosed guy. Big scorer. He can really score uh, score points very effectively. He's built up a six-to-two lead here. And it, endurance means such is such a key in this sport that uh, it'll certainly tell here in the final period for Calderon. Yeah. We'll you see. really see the endurance more too in the heavier weights. They seem to get run down a little bit Absolutely. more quicker than the lighter weights. So warning of a stall against uh, Northern Illinois, I think. Stall warning. And now here again is Calderon trying to press the advantage. Uh, they're pretty well locked up. Again, that is a front headlock by Calderon. Puts and an awful lot of pressure on the defensive wrestler. You know, trying to break him down, in effect. And you'll see that a lot by the Northern Illinois wrestlers. They do like to use that front headlock. Mm -hmm. 15 seconds remaining as both wrestlers went off the mat. Second period action. Called around in the darker trunks, and he has been in control here. Jernak got behind early in this match, and he nearly trying to break down Calderon, tries to get around the corner, and with that, as he was just starting to make his move to get around the corner, time ran out on him, and he'll have to try it again. Calderon looked like he was fortunate on that one because Jernick was quick enough. He was coming around to get on top. It was a head-to-head -head position. And now we have a front headlock by Jernick, and he's attempting to go behind, obviously, to secure the takedown. Yeah. Calderon has got to maintain a 180-degree angle to not allow that to happen. To keep his legs away. Correct. Where uh, he is not vulnerable to attack. It's one of the nice basic rules to always keep in mind. The uh, legs are probably... Uh, that's why I guess uh, uh, going ahead and uh, getting a single leg is probably the easiest uh, point of attack, is it not, Coach? You're absolutely correct. Yeah. You're absolutely correct, Bill. And I, I think the important thing is that uh, uh, each wrestler keep the movement going throughout the, throughout the match. Uh, and finally, the, the superior wrestler is going to end up on top, obviously, because of that motion that takes place during the match. Now, we've had a pause here. Uh, and I really don't know what the, they may be just checking the clocks here, but everything seems to be functioning properly. Perhaps there's a question at the scores table regarding that caution, uh, which was called against uh, Calderon earlier. We have a 6-2 match. And now uh, Jurenek will have the position of disadvantage. Two coaches are talking and checking. They're pretty good friends, too, these uh, two head coaches. They know each other very well. Coach. Uh, Don Flavin in his 18th year here at uh, NIU and George Girardi in his ninth year at Northern. And here we go into the third period. Jernick tried to, looked like he was going to try to stand out of it, but... Uh, he's trying to keep that weight forward so Jernick can't get position to get up. Indeed, he's kept the pressure on him now. Jernick was able to stand out of it and Calderon followed him up and threw him right back down. Did a very nice job there in one of the uh, really effective and very basic elements of the sport we saw right there as he followed him up and was able to lift him. The follow and lift. What well, is interesting now, Bill and Ann, is that uh, Calderon is wrestling also and gaining a lot of control here with his legs. And you don't often see that with a smaller wrestler. Yeah. Yeah, very impressive. He has really had... Uh, match control for the, for the great uh, great part of this match, wouldn't you say? Oh, right there. The, there was no advantage as far as anything happening, so the official called it back. Called him back to the center of the mat to get some motion going. 
So again, Jernick will be in the down position here. And tried to stand out. It was nearly out of it, but then Calderon was able to catch him and kind of drag him back. Oh, yeah. One thing, you have to get out of it in a hurry. You want to make that good, powerful move right away. Make a good, positive statement. He's up, fighting for hand control. Got rolled back over. He was fighting for hand control. Couldn't get those hands free. Calderon is showing some excellent balance. And still working those legs again, Coach, as you mentioned. And two points. Two point reversal. Excellent effort for Zernick, and he's put the pressure on and closed it to within two. Trying to roll him over. And now Calderon is just hanging on 34 seconds. Zernick sensing that he needs a near fall here to tie this. There will be no time advantage at the end of this match. Yeah, indeed, the way the clock is working right now, uh, the... Uh, the uh, the time advantage would not be a factor. It would be well under a minute. One. Another point. Stalling. Yep. So now it's a six to five match, and it is very tight. Five seconds left. Jeremek going for everything that he can. Very Calderon close. Hung on. He hung on and won it. Scored his points early. And won it by a six to five score. And if that's an example of what we're going to be seeing tonight, we are in for an outstanding <laughs> evening. Two very evenly matched teams, I'm sure. And uh, Jernick certainly tried right down to the final second. So in the dual meet, six points goes for the fall to Northern Illinois. They are out in front, or three, excuse me, three points, rather, on the fall. And uh, we will uh, have coming up as our next match, uh, Nico Ross and Tony Piotrowski. But let's take a look right here. Coach, what do you see that you like? The move that is being executed is a basic switch. That uh, the terminology doesn't vary with that move, but uh, it's just a reversal of position. And uh, now what Jernick has to do is an attempt to tilt or tip points. Uh, at this point, he was behind by two. Calderon looked like he was trying to get a cross face and got his position, his hips a little bit out of control as far as the weight disposition. And that's where Jernick was able to take control. That's right. Now they're introducing the wrestlers for the 126-pound weight class. Northern Illinois has taken a three-to-nothing lead here. We will have Tony Piotrowski for Northern Illinois and Nico Ross, a young freshman, wrestling against him. And so our second match is underway. These uh, uh, Piotrowski stands five feet six, and it looks like uh, Ross has a couple of inches on him in terms of height. Front headlock. Applied by Ross. They're pretty well tangled up. What is uh, Piotrowski trying to do in the lower position here, Coach? Well, he got or, into the lower position, uh, Bill, by uh, some virtue of going after a single leg takedown. And uh, he overextended himself and had his head down, uh, thereby allowing uh, Ross to get a front headlock. That's when you're vulnerable to attack. I'm sorry, O'Brien. Yeah. Well, Nico Ross is wrestling here against uh, Tony Piotrowski, and we have no score in the match. We're just underway, first minute. Ross was actually uh, not supposed to. Tom O'Brien was supposed to wrestle in this group, but they have moved him up. Thank you. I a little bit. Yeah, because of the, uh, they had a wrestler who could not go tonight. Now they're over the side of the, net, the uh, uh, mat, so they'll go ahead and uh, go back and set up once again. Well, they've had to, to do some switching with a lot of their wrestlers. They had their heavyweight come in. They did not have a heavyweight. And they had um, Daryl Crouch come in, offensive lineman on the football team. So this is his first year wrestling. Attempted a takedown, and indeed two points for Northern Illinois as Piotrowski did get him over. So the takedown is established. At the process, they went off the mat, so they will go back. Let's take a look and analyze, take a little look at what we saw here. Okay, this is a very fine execution. Uh, it's the start of a fireman's carry, and the final effort on the move is called a tip. It's the tip series uh, in which, obviously, the opponent went to his back, and there were two points secured right there. And as we return live, Ross trying to walk out, and Piotrowski just got right on top of him. And, boy, he has a, a tremendous amount of vertical pressure on him. Again, using his legs. Yeah, yeah he does have him tied up pretty well. Tough situation to be in. This will not be... Uh, very easy to uh, uh, get out of uh, 
out of this. It looks like uh, Piotrowski right now is holding all the cards. Came in with a 3-6-0 record. And uh, a stoppage uh, here as uh, two wrestlers really got locked up. So they'll go ahead and... Nothing happening from yeah. that position, so the official calls them back. So to the referee's position, they'll go once again with uh, Piotrowski at the advantage. He has a two-point lead. That's a good close look at Tony. He's a freshman, second-year freshman. They redshirted him last year. And he does have a lot of experience because he, he did redshirt last year. He has four more years of eligibility. He backed up Allison last year at the 126 weight. There he is. Uh, he locked, uh, got his hands locked. What is the lock he is attempting here, Coach? With uh, that would be called a uh, half Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a front half. And uh, obviously, he's they're going to break this position shortly. Yeah, indeed, he did get that one hand uh, free. Applies a lot of pressure to the shoulder and the neck area uh, in an attempt for Piotrowski to make a turn. Ross was able to stand up, but Piotrowski had the legs still in control and was able to knock him back down. Correct. Uh, Piotrowski is riding very high, but you can do that, obviously, if you have control of your opponent's legs. We'll probably be speaking in, uh, to a greater degree about riding time as we go along, which will accrue as this match goes along. If one wrestler is at an advantage, the clock is constantly running in his favor, he, and he can get an extra point if the total, the accumulated total for the three, uh, the three periods, the three periods exceeds one minute. So that's worth keeping in mind. Boy, for a moment, Piotrowski looked dangerously close to tilting over, didn't he? <laughs> Seemed to be in kind of a tough spot, but he hung well, in he there. He had that half Nelson yeah. position again. He hung in there. He would not let go. And uh, so, indeed, once again, he's on top. And it's twice we've seen him really put on the pressure and stay on top of that wrestler, put a lot of weight on the hands. It would appear that uh, nothing is really happening here other than riding time. But uh, the referee will let this continue uh, simply because Piotrowski is attempting a fall. He's attempting to turn yeah. his opponent. Mm -hmm. So two periods, or a period... Uh, over here with a two to nothing lead now for Piotrowski. Piotrowski is such an aggressive wrestler. He's made some mistakes because of his aggressiveness and inexperience, and he will have a tendency to get rolled when he tries to go for that pin. He was the uh, 84 Illinois Class AA prep champion, wrestling at 119 pounds. He upset one of the really top wrestlers in the state that year, Eric Mueller, who was at Champaign Central. So uh, he knows what it is to uh, perform well when the pressure is greatest. No escape there. There it is. There it is. Indeed. So the escape point comes, and uh, Nico Ross is on the board with his first point. Or Piotrowski. Excuse me, Piotrowski. Rather Piotrowski was so third. quick, he was able to stand up and get in a position of head to head. So it is now three to nothing. Leg dive attempted there. Did not get it. Ross could not... Uh, and as he was going for that uh, left leg, uh, with uh, kind of going for a snatch, did not get it. Down to a minute 30 remaining here. Well, he kind of had a hand slap and moved the headgear a little bit. Piotrowski was adjusting it, and Ross took the advantage of it to go down. Yeah, it might have affected his concentration just for a moment, and boy, that's all it takes. All right, we saw this being done quite a bit in practice. There were several wrestlers who really tried to keep their hand. Right. It's an excellent method of a setup. Uh, it's called a head slap. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually as you execute it, you need to be much closer to your opponent. So you can, uh, as you said, snatch that leg. Mm -hmm. Headlock here attempted by Ross. <laughs> Northern <laughs> Illinois gets another point for uh, stalling. stalling. It's just a warning. Yeah, no. Indeed it is. I haven't seen anything go up on the board, so as they uh, went out of bounds, they'll start at an even position and stoppage for a moment. I, perhaps uh, Ross's headgear might have uh, swung a little bit on him. Usually when that happens, they'll stop action right away if that headgear, uh, there's a problem. Ross changed his level and was ready to go at the leg and then, didn't, and then did not make the move. Notice they'll circle around. When they do circle, a lot of times they're setting up for the exactly the opposite of what you would think. They're going to go at the opposite leg from the direction in which they circle. So it's challenging to read. Ross, oh, 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 
ISU call for uh, stalling. Would that be a point? Is that the second one? Second, yep. second call is a point. All right, so uh, <laughs> they called stalling on both men, as it turned out. So Illinois State gets a point because it would have been the second call against Northern. So it is now a three to one match here. Still no advantage for either wrestler. So no takedown ruled in this situation. Uh, they're trying to tie each other up here. We do have a lot of action happening and, and it's also happening on part because of the official. He has called that stalling and the caution and uh, making the individuals do wrestle. Forces them to try to move in an aggressive manner. Goes for the leg and this time he gets it. Outside single. Yeah, indeed. He got it high. Now goes after the ankle and by that time expires just as he was getting ready for the takedown. So Piotrowski got a little help from what can often be your best friend, that clock and uh, maintains a three to one lead. Ross had been setting up the single leg for a number of times here and uh, I'm sure we'll see him go back to it now. Well, he will be in the up position this time for the third period of a three to one. At the end, even though the clock was running out, you saw Piotrowski going to the end of the mat too to try to set it back up. Uh, he's not hiding his ankle, tried to walk right out and he grabbed one ankle and was able to hold him. Notice he has the ankle with the right hand and now it drives him down. Drove him right back down. And now he's able to... Good uh, reversal. Great, great reversal right there as he was able to slip out of it. And that makes it five to one. When he lost that ankle, Piotrowski just went right to work and kicked his legs out. And Illinois State. Ross did a good roll right there getting out of that. Good escape. Here it is on the replay. And the reversal is another basic switch move, which uh, I believe Ross was not waiting for, and he just got a little bit lax. And Ross did the same to Piotrowski as far as getting out for an escape. Uh, I have the scores being 5-3 to three now, but the board listed as 5-2. I believe that is correct, Bill. 5-2? Yes. Down a minute left. Point, NIU, one point, Illinois State. Illinois State picks up a point for stalling. So that now makes it uh, five to three. It's really interesting too because Piotrowski looks like he's moving and try to, trying to initiate something to happen, but he's been called twice now in the second period and this third period for stalling. That's correct. That's a pretty discretionary call on the part of the official hand, but uh, uh, Piotrowski is making the initial movement and doing nothing to follow it up. And we'll get a little uh, attention from the uh, training staff here as these uh, two wrestlers have been working very, very hard. And also the coach gets, should get a word in edgewise for both of them. Well, I think one, one important thing about this match, uh, you've seen it in the reversals and the escapes, is that uh, neither opponent is really controlling the other opponent's hands and a very important part or the fundamental part of wrestling is to gain hand control hand control indeed well that's interesting we uh, i guess perhaps uh, as we see uh, head coach of the illinois state redbirds george girardi talking to uh, Nico Ross wanted to pass along some things. I guess we saw that probably as much as anything when he walked out there at the beginning of the uh, of this period. Coach Girardi felt that this might be a match where he might lose, it might be close because of Nico Ross is a freshman and they had to move Tom O'Brien out of this class. Tried to go for the single leg that time. Piotrowski had it for a moment, but Ross was able to fight it off with just a lot of individual strength and putting uh, Putting some pressure down. And Piotrowski does have stalling points against him, and now he has been wrestling aggressively. He's made two offensive moves right there. The clock is in his favor also as far as uh, riding. Single time. leg attack right there. Going for it. See if he can get him over. Tried to uh, sweep, leg sweep him over, and they went off the mat in the process. Almost as important there as securing that single leg is just to have the leg not allowing your opponent to counter that. You know, yeah. you take off a lot of seconds on the clock. So Ross will try to uh, find a way around the corner. He was headed in the right direction and then uh, found his progress to get a little tough. And with that, the match comes to an end.
Time expires. And it is a 5-3 victory for Northern Illinois as Piotrowski wins that match, and that gives Northern a 6-0 lead as we'll be moving to the 134-pound class, and you'll be seeing that when we come in just a moment. Twain Miller here at the uh, Chick Evans Field House. We're watching uh, Legion Wrestling, and so far, Northern Illinois has won both of its matches. We'll see one of the better wrestlers we're going to see, Mid-America Conference champion of 126 of a year ago, Nate Allison, against... Tom O'Brien, who will be matched up against him, and O'Brien is moved up in weight in weight for this match, trying a uh, front headlock, and Allison able to just fight his way out of it. With you're talking about hand control right there, he was able to shake himself loose, Coach. You'll see Nate uh, using every fundamental that is important to good wrestling. Allison has an awful lot of quickness and strength. Yeah. He sure looks it, doesn't he? He looked very impressive in practice. He was doing an awful lot of good things. Uh, we thought when we saw him, now he has a two-for-one on that right arm. See what he's going, he's trying to set up, uh, trying to go around and grab the back of that leg. They're pretty well tied up here. You can see that both strength and quickness will be a factor, uh, especially as we go up toward... And there's a strength right there, the takedown. So two points going to Allison on that, and... O'Brien did a good job trying to almost get a reversal, rolled it around, but Allison, so strong and he's so big, was able to come back up on top. Uh, unfortunately, as I was speaking, I missed the takedown. <laughs> I'm looking for it on a replay. It, it happened very quick, very, very well, quick. It was bang, bang, I want to tell you. And so Allison will try to uh, press his advantage here, and O'Brien would love to stand out of this. And a beautiful effort as Allison would not let him go and flipped him over. Look at him work on those back legs now. You notice Nate has, uh, Nate Allison has hand control. He's, it's very difficult for that uh, bottom position man to turn out when he does not have hand control. Yeah, and he is very well established. He's that one hand through the, he had the one hand through the crotch back. He's still hanging on there and that's, that's the hand that he'll use in trying to roll him. He's trying to set up to roll him over and get near a pinning combination. Or a half Nelson, there he goes. There's the half Nelson up top with his left hand, left arm as he brought it over, his hand right on the neck. And uh, of course all this time, riding uh, time is starting to pile up in favor of Allison and O'Brien has to find his way out of this. Went for the right arm that time and kind of pulled it underneath. And now he has him right back where he had him before. Look at him try to drive him over. Trying to roll him. Nate has just put in an arm bar, which applies an awful lot of pressure to the shoulder. He, he, the, bottom, the bottom wrestler wants to turn at that point. And he nearly had him rolled over and uh, ran out of real estate. So they'll go back and set up. And once again, O'Brien, for the second time in this period, will find himself in the disadvantaged spot. He wasn't able to walk out of this or stand up out of it earlier. Both these teams like to stand up as a basic approach. We don't see that much sitting out or expected. Uh, I think uh, Coach Flavin's attitude was uh, on some of these things, well, if they come with it, if they already have it when they get here, fine. But otherwise, we're just going to try and coach the basics and, and get them very skilled in some of the basic elements and go from there, and well, that, largely because he has such a young team. That's very true, Bill, absolutely. You want to add to what they have and not take anything away from it. Allison going to work. Too near fall right there. And half Nelson once again. Getting a tilt over. He got his neck out from underneath that. And another point to Northern Illinois. Another two points as a matter of fact to Allison. So he has uh, doubled his total. Near fall I think. And that a Near fall happens when your shoulders are exposed to the mat. They don't necessarily have to be down on the mat. That's correct. But uh, exposed, meaning that he is in jeopardy of going over, a very clear jeopardy of going over. Oh, he has good hand control, doesn't he? He's really holding on to that. And he has a leg tilt as yeah. well, so. There is a tilt. Let's see when they start scoring points on this. Or stuff to try to bridge out of this, isn't it? And time, once again, the clock turns out to be a very good friend for Tom O'Brien, who has really uh, taken on a load here in Allison. Uh, Allison, that time, was able to hold that near fall for more than five seconds and when you can do that it's, it's worth three points and, That's he, right in. and he got him just as the period was expiring so that makes it a seven to nothing
lead, and now he has a chance to pick up more than three points. If the match should end with a margin of greater than eight points here, he would get four in the dual meet score. At five, if it finishes between 12 and 14, of course, if it goes above 15. There's a stand up and escape right there by Allison. That's Allison. Uh, that's uh, Allison with another down. point. So they come in a hurry. Takedown was just a simple go behind. Uh, uh, we saw O'Brien with his head down on the mat, uh, allowing Nate to go around very easily. It is 10 to nothing now, and O'Brien is really getting a workout. You got to hand it to the kid for going up in class to take on a wrestler, the caliber of a defending MAC champion. He was number two in the MAC at 118 two years ago. So Allison's been there, consistently wrestles very, very well. And look at him keep that pressure on his hands. He has four pins this year. He has the most wins also for Northern Illinois. He's 16, six and zero. Oh. With four pins. You can see how. Received an invitation to the NCAAs last year. So uh, he's quick, he's very strong. All of the elements, athletic skills are there. And you can see very, uh, seems that like his moves flow very well too. He flows quickly from one to another. Trying to Dave simply turn him with a half Nelson. Oh, and he's in really serious trouble now. He's going for the pin. O'Brien keeping his head up, and that's what's helping him keep his shoulders off the mat. And this can be very, very difficult. No point scored as of yet. Trying to bridge out. The shoulders, arching. The shoulders just need to touch the mat for one full second, and uh, a fall is recorded. That could be it. That would be the end. So you can't really take much of a chance. There it is. At 2.30... Uh, 243, 243, the pin, and that's six points. Okay, here it is. It's a little difficult to see, but Nate does have his uh, his right arm underneath uh, O'Brien's neck. And he uses his chin and he uses bring it down, then gets his chest down. up there. There's an awful lot of pressure right there. Mm. Good effort by Nate Allison as he takes it with a pin, and Northern increases its lead to 12 to nothing, and they have really cast the gauntlet here. Allison looked very, very impressive. He uh, seemed to be, uh, he just really showed his stuff. We knew he had it, and he really showed it. I think Coach Flavin definitely felt at that weight class, 134, that if they could get a pin out of Nate Allison, it would really help team point-wise. Let's watch one of the takedowns again here by Allison. Okay. That Using was the, the first trip. one that I did miss, yes, and Nate That's just... It was excellent penetration. It was a front trip, and uh, uh, he actually ended up going behind. Good leg sweep right there. Eric Zietler, 142 pounds now, will watch. Paul Kupski for Northern Illinois. Zietler for Illinois State. And a takedown by Kupski right away as he goes right to work. And they're tangled up and go over the side of the mat. And so Kupski will find himself on top in the referee's position here. And a two to nothing point lead as we're just underway only 14 seconds old that's a good look at Zietler on the bottom Zietler is a junior who replaced senior and co-captain Tony Pellegrini who had to quit the team because of recurring neck injuries that he had suffered and he left the team Pellegrini left the team with a 77 and 32 record so to lose a wrestler of that caliber is really tough and Zietler here coming in is you really have to admire uh, the adversity some of these wrestlers work under is just incredible and the challenges that they face. And here's a young man who really has taken on quite a challenge. Kupski trying to work hard on him. Ziegler trying to, try, trying to drive forward and kind of step out if he can. And he's getting pretty close. Yeah, but just hanging in there, Kupski was able to hold on, keep the hand control. Zietler isn't going anywhere until it's out there. We see the northern wrestlers uh, using their legs very well, dominating actually uh, the top position. And they have that, uh, as you take a look, uh, you can see his legs are pretty well wrapped around on, on uh, Ziegler's left leg. And with that, the official says uh, we have a stalemate position. So uh, back to the referee's position where they'll begin once again. We have a 2 nothing score here. If you recall, Bill, in the old days, that was uh, when you were wrestling, it was called a cross-body ride. <laughs> <laughs> I was never good enough to do it. <laughs> Somehow I always ended up with my, uh, with my shoulders on the mat in a big hurry. 
you know, talking about the leg riding and how much Northern Illinois wrestlers use the legs, Don Flavin really teaches that to his wrestlers yeah. and will try to use it as much as possible. So I'm going to work on that outside ankle there for a moment. Now uh, there's that leg tied up again. And uh, Ziegler, you're going to have a heck of a headache if you spend four or five minutes in that position. Absolutely. <laughs> You can be, uh, end up uh, coming out looking for the aspirin bottle. Illinois State has not been able to win as of yet, or uh, get a score a uh, dual meet point as of yet. So they'll go back once again here now as the stalemate was ruled. Once again, it is Kupski in the up position. A little bit too quick right there. Yeah. So we'll just go ahead and reload here. Interesting thing, uh, thus far in the matches, uh, neither wrestler from either team has chosen the up position mm -hmm. or on their feet uh, to start that second period. Yeah, yeah, isn't that, that is rather interesting. Well, both teams uh, feel, I think, that they are so good standing up and can get out of that, but well, it has not occurred. Well, this could be real trouble here as uh, Ziedler is just lifting his way out. But that, the advantage Kupski had was the fact that he had his legs still wrapped around Ziedler. Kupski looked in a pretty tough spot to me. As uh, now he's trying to walk. look at him grab that ankle, that stops him from being able to uh, get out easily. And Kupski just continues to uh, ride him. Ziedler's move is uh, explosion out and trying to get up. However, he still is not coming back for uh, Kupski's hand. And Kupski's hand goes to the ankle, uh -huh, uh -huh. nullifying that escape. Would you? Uh, Illinois State with a point uh, for stalling, and that makes it three to nothing. It's just a warning. Oh, okay. That, all right. That indeed uh, a reversal called as right at the uh, horn. Ziedler was able to get out of it, got a reversal, and seemed to be in pretty good shape. We have a two-two tie, and this is our closest match of the evening thus far. Okay, here's where some high riding and uh, over aggressiveness on the part of Kopski. Uh, uh, allowed Zietler to secure a And he couldn't get reversal. his legs around right. Zietler at all to get that advantage. Got a good double leg there, and Zietler will start in the uh, up position here at the advantage. Trying to work on that uh, right arm a little bit, freeze that if he can. What is he attempting to do here, Coach? Bill, I was hoping you weren't going to ask. I was trying to think <laughs> of that terminology. Uh, He's trying uh, to turn There's him. an awful lot of leverage being applied to the thigh, the outside leg, and uh, the inside shoulder. Right We're looking for tilt points right now. He's got him. He's got two near fall. We almost had a boy that were twisted around. I thought there might be a reversal there uh, that we'd see. Uh, Zietler has a very good command of what was going on from that top position. Ziegler gets an ear fall, two points for that. As he puts some pressure on. And off the map is the ruling. Kupski was trying to get a reversal. He trying to get that roll over. Just he was on top for a second, but then Ziegler got him right back down. So Kupski's gonna have to be very careful here. He's from North Illinois, play uh, wrestled at Payless Heights Shepherd High School for Ron Oglesby. More than anything, they say he just needs experience, just the chance to get out there and do it, and he's getting plenty of that tonight. He's faced some very good competition all season long, this young man. So he has a little bit of a feel for what it's all about. We see plenty of good competition here at Northern. They've been facing top-ranked teams, it seems like, since the beginning of the year. That's why they're winless in the 1986 campaign. Everybody they've faced is nationally ranked. There's a tilt. Ziegler trying to get it. But uh, Ziedler wants to be careful now because his back is being exposed. Yeah. And if he's held there for one second, it'll be a fall. Yeah, indeed. He, he does in, He puts himself at risk a little bit. Yeah, he was down. Yes, he was. Woo. Just for a second. And Kupski trying to take advantage of that. Put as much additional pressure on as he can. That's how quickly the fortunes can change. A near fall called in for Ziedler. And that uh, is a three-point near fall. So now it's a 7-2 lead, and with that, the horn sounds, ending period number two. An accumulated total of 47 seconds of riding time in favor, in Ziedler's favor. Or no, excuse me, that's in favor of Kupski to the moment. Ziedler does a good job as far as tilting Kupski. Here he brings him, you'll see him bring him right, just over here, just right like there, he's exploring. Right there, his shoulders are down for the second. 
And we have a reversal coming right out of the gate as we return live by Kupski. And uh, it is now seven to four as Kupski scores some points. Now he wants to go to work. His best chance with a minute 40 remaining here is to go for the pin. We haven't seen anybody deliberately let anybody up as of yet in these three matches. That's correct, Bill, and, and that was, that's part of the, the technique of wrestling and the, and the uh, philosophy is if you can't turn your opponent to let him up. And there it was right did. there. there I, just We're as I say that, there he deliberately lets him up. All right. Oftentimes easier to secure a takedown than it is yeah. kill points or a turn. Indeed. So here's Ziegler going right to work, was going for a double leg. He had one yeah, leg, one. and now he kind of locks on to that, gets a single leg. Down to one minute. Illinois State looks like they have a good chance. He sees that uh, Kupski... Uh, Kupski's on top, but ziedler has got that leg where he just can't get all the way over. Two points. And now he's got a takedown. And now it's closed within a point. It's actually a tie score at this point. Yeah, that's right, including the riding time, which is accumulating. We're down to 39 seconds left. So now we're even at eight apiece, in effect, if you include the riding time, which will be factored in. Down to 30 seconds left. Ziedler was in trouble for a moment. Trying to reverse him. He wants to, uh, in a position possibly to... Uh, Kupski's on top, but he's having trouble close. right now. I don't know who is on top right now. Those two wrestlers are so locked up. 15 seconds. Kupski is still in control. There's the reversal given. The reversal is given, and that's a big move for Ziedler. He couldn't have come at a better time, and that breaks. And now a three-point near fall, and that really opens up the door, and Ziegler had all the right answers when it really counted. In the last 15 seconds, he was able to register a reversal and a near fall, five points in a 14-7 to seven win, as it turned out. Kupski was up on top right here, but Ziegler took advantage of it. Kupski needed to roll through and turn right. through on this. He couldn't get his weight going. And Zietler's just holding him right down with shoulders down. Of course, Zietler's hips were behind and uh, thus allowing him to come back and get that reversal. That was a very aggressive match uh, on the part of both wrestlers. And it ended at 14 to seven and another point and he would have picked up an extra dual meet point in the process, but he did not. So uh, he scored a lot and that shows you how quickly these wrestlers can score points. We saw how quickly it can happen. If you can tilt them and tilt them and tilt them, you can pile them up in a hurry. Rod Perry in the 150 pound category for Illinois State against Tim Coco. Both are sophomore wrestlers. Tim is about 5'8". Perry looks to be about the same height. Coco is just uh, coming back. He wrestled earlier this year at 158. And now has moved down to the 150 category. Going right after that leg is Perry. Has that single leg high. Interesting story about Rod Perry is that he will be going to the Mayo Clinic. He has a virus in his lymph glands and they just can't find a cure for it right now. And in his matches, he's just gotten tired and his health is, because of his health, he just gets fatigued a little bit more later on in the match. We certainly hope they do find a, uh, a workable solution for this young man. But boy, what a competitive wrestler he has been uh, uh, as he's uh, up from 142 to the 150 pound category. And because of this uh, situation, they've really not tried to control his weight very much, Ann. That's a very important factor. So he's really wrestling up from probably where he should be wrestling a little bit. And that's probably got to be one of the toughest things, Wayne, as far as the wrestlers trying to make weight seeing what they're going to eat, what, how they're going to lose it. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right, Ann. On your opening comments, uh, both you and Bill were talking about the merits of wrestling and how difficult it is upon each competitor in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah. But the thing that really makes it most difficult is the weight control and the dieting. Yeah, because of fatigue. You would think the fatigue, uh, uh, these guys will be on the exercise bike to wear the, uh, the very suits, the sweats and, and everything else. And then... Uh, you know, they really need their rest. This, this is an extremely physically demanding sport. He's off the mat, there's no score still. A minute 21 remaining here in this uh, first period. We're watching the 150 pounders in action. Tim Coco, a third year sophomore for Northern Illinois. Rod Perry for uh, Illinois State. 
Coco, you know, sat out last year. They they redshirted him, and uh, he. But I'll tell you what, he really earned it. What better partners could you have to practice with than Gene and Ernie Batch? And we've had a, a warning on stalling here against Illinois State. Sometimes they'll just get locked. Seem, locked up seem to be just hanging on. We'll see this a lot in the bigger classes, I think. Uh, More so fatigue. in the bigger classes, yeah. though, yes. Where the fatigue factor is, and a, a wrestler knows where he can take just perhaps a momentary break if he has everything tied up and, and rest for just a second. Of course, it can be very <laughs> costly also. There's so much strength involved in the upper weights that uh, the wrestlers are more hesitant to put themselves in a disadvantaged position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the attacks, a lot of the attacks are high. You don't see much for the legs or, or anything, not as much. Now we have stalling uh, the other way, warned. No points awarded as of yet. Uh, Perry tried to get that leg, going for a leg high. And now Coco made his move as he changed his level and tried to go underneath. And uh, it's difficult to get underneath when that opponent has control of your head. Yeah. <laughs> There's a double. Yeah. Double leg right there. Yeah, There's two points for Perry as he gets the takedown. Eight seconds left as they go off the mat here in the first period. So Perry, first to score here on a very nice move. Coco gets standing a little bit too straight up and needs to bend his knees a little bit more, and that's where Perry took the advantage. Went right up the center. That's a very good observation, Annie. He was uh, far too much upright. Mm -hmm. So Perry will have the advantage in the referee's position. Coco tried to Stand roll up. out of it, stood up for a moment, but Perry just followed him up and threw him right back down again. As his arms locked as the hands locked as the period uh, first period comes to an end and uh, Rod Perry is on the board with two points and Coco has been shut out to the moment. We mentioned earlier both teams basically when they're down like to try and stand up rather than sit out. So Perry has elected I think he elected to start in the uh, at the position of disadvantage and Coco will be on top. He does not hide his ankles here. Coco makes him stay down by grabbing that ankle. And then just driving forward. And now the leg riding. Putting the weight on his hands, and now it's time to go to work and set him up. And now, now, as you say, Coach, there's, there's a lot of setting up being done here as various combinations are faked and thoughts are given as, what is my best chance to roll him over and get him in a difficult spot here? He's working. Does he have he's applying all the pressure. Uh, that position that you, know, you refer to it as a position of disadvantage for uh, for Perry. Uh, however, he probably chose that because he thinks that's more advantageous to him as a wrestler. But uh, uh, Coco is putting all the pressure on. Yeah, if he can get out of it, of course, he has an immediate point. Then he can turn around and score two more. If that's he can, right. uh, so you can score from there probably a little bit more quickly. So once again... Uh, and right away from that position, if you feel that you do have the advantage, you can score that point from that escape and then go for a takedown. That time we saw Perry try to stand out of it, but just as he was starting to move that leg forward, that's when Coco got there with the right hand and tied up the ankle momentarily. That's the best way to counter as far as somebody trying to stand up or sit out is grabbing that ankle. Another good example of the... you talked about the legs here and how effectively they use them. Illinois IU gets a point as Perry is called for Warren on a stall for the second time. So the point going to uh, NIU, and it is a two to one match here in the second period, down to 44 seconds left. Ziegler, or excuse me, uh, Ziegler uh, in the previous match was victorious over Kupski, and that finally got uh, Illinois State on the board. One of the ways it might look that the bottom guy is trying to stall is the fact that he is on his belly, he's not up on his knees and doesn't have his head up and sometimes an official will think that it's more of a, a stall because he's just flat that flat out. Yeah, and not really making much of an effort to get out of it. That's right, it, and it takes a real good interpretation on the part of the official because uh, that man in a bottom position may not be able to move. That's right. And if he does, he might be putting himself in a more precarious situation. Yeah, yeah. So you want to be careful on how you come up as well. Uh, uh, Coach Girardi's not too happy right now because he was called for another stalling point. 
and he does not know why because he feels Rod Perry was trying to get out of it. And as you said, Coach, that even though Perry was on his belly, was he was working hard and trying to get up, but the official interpreted it a different way. Well, now we've had a stalling point against uh, against Northern. Yeah, so uh, Perry has taken the lead once again at three to two, and Perry once again will be in the down position here to see what he can do. Tim Coco from Burbank, Burbank St. Lawrence High School with that. The horn sounds indicating the end of the second period. We only had a few seconds left there as the whistle sounded and then the horn almost simultaneously after it. So we have a very tight match through two periods once again. And now Coco will be in the down position. Northern and the lighter weights have really controlled the matches pretty much so and took advantage of that. And it seems like now the heavier weights are a little bit more even right now. We'll see how explosively Coco tries to come out here as it is three to two going into the third period in favor of Rod Perry, the wrestler in red. There's Coco right there. Yeah, came out of it. He's trying to go for a reverse here. Well, they're head to head. Here they got the reverse. The escape call for NIU, so Perry lost the point there as Coco picked one up and tied it at three. And the wrestler is now considered to be on even footing. And they'll go ahead and uh, start, uh, both of them will start up here. Let's take a look at this escape or so. Okay, we see uh, Perry trying to get the tilt points, but he rolled him through and the momentum just allowed Coco to come up on top or into the neutral position. So Perry uh, extended himself a little bit too much. The momentum carried him all the way through and it caused Trying to tilt caused more problems than it was worth. Minute 17 remaining here. The stall points are, uh, or the riding points are a factor here. Riding time, and it stands at 2.06 in favor of Tim Coco. Illinois State, however, gets the point. So really, in effect, we have a tie match. Illinois State has a, gets a stalling point here in the third period. So it is four to three, but the riding time would be in favor of the Huskies here takedown with two more for uh, Illinois State and uh, that couldn't have come at a better time for Rod Perry he needed it. Well, Tim Coco looked like he lost a little bit of concentration right there and he let Rod Perry get that leg attack. Here we go he, Perry's got that high leg and Coco looked like he was going to try and get out of off the map but then he just like stopped and I think that's where he lost his concentration and Rod Perry saw it and got the takedown. At no time, man, can you, can you be content with one point lead or the riding time That's lead right. because you just need to be the aggressor the entire time. You can change too quickly. Coco trying to stand up. He does so, but Perry still has hand control and therefore there's no uh, escape on that because hand control, he still had his hands locked in front of him. When Coco was down in the, in the third period, in the beginning of this third period, as Coach, you said, he was more aggressive. He knew he was down and had to get those points. And then as soon as he tied it up, then all of a sudden, he seemed to relax a little bit more. Right, worked to his disadvantage, obviously. Coco needs an escape and a reversal very badly. He has 38 seconds to try to get one. Perry has his legs, so it's going to be difficult for Coco to get out of it. Yeah, and, and Coco's fighting hard to try to get hand control back. Now he gave up on that and is trying to just get a base from which to work. Oh, he's going after it, he shook loose nearly got free. He almost got rolled through it, but Perry's got his leg. And off the mat they go with 17 seconds left in the match. No points awarded on that. Six to three is our score, and with the riding time figured in, which will go in favor of uh, Coco at a six to four, so really, right now Coco needs a reversal. He has got to have one, and he has 17 seconds in which to get it. That's not much time. So he needs a, a point to get out. Uh, he looks a little tired right now, He too. does. He's thinking over very thoroughly. All right, what's my best escape move? Because he better show it right here. He tried to roll him. Couldn't get out. 13 seconds. Not much time. Trying to tilt him over, lean him over. Eight seconds. Coco's in a tough way. Nearly got him rolled over. Tilt for Perry. Going for the one leg there. Good not. The clock beat him. He was trying to do it, and he ran out of time. 
and Illinois State. Able to, they get a tilt points for Perry right at the end. And Perry gets the win by a final score of eight to three. And so it's a 12-6 dual match score right now, dual meet score with Northern Illinois on top. We'll be back. E.C. Cotton in the red uh, trunks and Mike Green in the darker colored trunks. Mike Green for Northern Illinois. Still look like they were dancing there flying this, through this the air. This is going to be a good match. This has the ma <laughs> yeah, of a very good, good match. Uh, upper body things are happening here. Yeah, Cotton is an outstanding athlete. Mike Green is a very gutty competitor. Oh boy. Pound for pound, he's probably one of the strongest wrestlers for Northern Illinois. And, yeah. and E.C. Green, best athlete for Illinois State. Yeah, Green is uh, a senior. Cotton is a sophomore. Green comes in with a 7-2-0 record. They go off the mat again. And uh, Mike Green wrestled at Glen Bard North for Bob Folk. We are in the first period. 12-6 is the dual meet score. Boy, Cotton tried to grab Good that arm. Hold. Yeah, indeed. He was uh, trying to roll him. He just spun over, spun around. He's so quick, he's done that a couple times now yeah. where he's flipped underneath and tried to get position on Green. Pretty well. And the third time. <laughs> he tried the first time, and from uh, the standing position. Right. Green on a single leg. Trying to pull him back. Boy, and E.C. Cotton was able to get out of that. But he still has a little difficulty on his hands as Mike Green has those hands pretty well locked up. And Green gets the points on the takedown. For a two to nothing lead in this match. The that key was, was earned. Key was he didn't lose hand control even though he was in difficulty. Right back to the fundamentals of the sport. He never lost hand control even though uh, E.C. Cotton had kind of walked out of it. It appeared. And now look at him work with those legs. Has him in trouble. And E.C. Cotton, he had him tilted a little bit too far over. Yeah, but a near fall is uh, given to uh, Mike Green. Had him in difficulty long enough. And an escape for uh, Cotton. So it's four to one now. Again, a cross body. Uh, pressure to the head and shoulders. And Green's really working with his legs a lot because he had his hands hanging. And as soon as he flipped Cotton, he's able to get him over. Cotton gets two points on a takedown as we resume action here, and now it is closed to four to three. And the riding time clock is in reverse now as uh, Mike Green finds himself in a tough way for the first time. He'd love to stand out of this if he could. But uh, Cotton's keeping that weight forward yeah. so Green can't not get up. And, and now he's right up on him once again, trying to pull that left arm back to set up something here and Green that time saw him over a little bit too much stood up did he uh, no point aw awarded for an escape there as they went over and uh, out of bounds so they'll uh, go ahead and set up and Green once again will uh, find himself on the bottom Green's a tough competitor he finished second in the MAC last year and yeah. unfortunate that Don Flavin was upset that he was not invited to the NCAA tournament despite the fact that he had 26 match wins to his credits, 26, 15, and two on the year. A lot of people felt that uh, he uh, didn't get his uh, just dues. You see Cotton threw Green right back down, and with that, the first period comes to an end, and we have a tight period. Two very gifted wrestlers and athletes really uh, put on a good display. This could be a very high-scoring uh, uh, match right here. You can really see the strength between these two wrestlers, but big difference maybe also in this heavier weight is the quickness between the two. Right, their quickness and strength could nullify each other, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very possible a match could not be high-scoring as well, Bill. Well, they're off to a good start. Cotton will be on top here <coughs> to get this uh, second period underway. Green tries to stand up, but still hand control maintained by Cotton. So there's no escape here. Threw him right back down. Followed him up and threw him right back down. 
Looking for a tilt right there from Cotton. The follow and lift. Cotton going right back to work. He's been pulling on that uh, left arm. Every time he's had him down, Northern Illinois worn on a stall. Green. Again, that was a very difficult call because Green uh, had a very difficult time getting his arm free. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had that left arm tied up pretty well. Here's Cotton again. Who, again, he lifts him. Are they on the mat? Nope. And the clock stopped with a minute 14 remaining here in the second period. It's actually to Cotton's advantage to let Green come up without hand control because uh, it's a little bit more punishing and it takes a little bit of endurance out of you to be taken back down to the mat into the same position. And he's done that several times here now. Correct. All right, Cotton sets up. Green trying to stand up. There he got loose. There he got loose. There's the escape. So it's five to three. First point of this period. And they're pretty well tied up here. Cotton trying to go underneath. Cotton is in excellent position for a, a move called a fireman's carry. Mm -hmm. uh, he has the arm underneath and he has control of the outside arm. However, we notice both wrestlers are bent over far too much to uh, get any penetration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a twirl move by Cotton, but that, got, that time it got him in trouble. And Green gets the takedown to add to his total, and now he has a seven to three lead. And Cotton finds himself in a difficult way, and there's Green going right to work to try to freeze that left arm. See him trying to draw it back. Green in danger, who nearly putting himself in a great deal of difficulty there. And you see Cotton really try to drive it here. He knows he has a chance if he can get things reversed. He has to watch his weight. Boy, that was nearly a reversal right there. That was nearly a, a reversal, but they ruled a near fall, so NIU gets two more points. And with that, the second period comes to an end. Three-point uh, reversal, excuse me, and it's been a big five-point second period for Mike Green, but boy, how close he came to uh, to uh, risking a pin to get those points. Uh, there was an awful lot of activity right there. Yeah. You could see Green's body awareness. Uh, uh, he just knew which way to go as Cotton was uh, applying some pressure to him. 10-3, to three, big lead for Green. He'd like to get more if he could, so to, to increase the dual meet score beyond just the three points for a win. Well, you were absolutely right, Bill. It could be high scoring. Yeah, it has been that. With Green getting into double figures, although Cotton is frozen at that three. He was shut out in the second period, so Green's been able to put some pressure on. And it seems to me Green has been initiating a lot of the, the movement as far as what's been going on, even though Green came up with the points. Green's very... Uh, Green reaching back. Yeah. Uh, he's and Cotton going right back to work. He has that right arm pretty well frozen. Now he has it, as you can see from ground level. Now he lost it. Green was able to get that arm free. Stand up by Green. And there's the escape. So Green now with 11 points. And with the, uh, well, the riding time in a minute eight in favor of uh, Cotton right now. Every time Cotton has had the advantage of being on top, Green has been able to stand up and get those hands out of the way, and he just turns real quick and gets out of Cotton's way. But when he has been on the bottom, bottom Green, he's been able to stand up against Cotton. Green sure. needs a few more points here. Go ahead, Coach. Well, I was just going to add to what Ann just said. Uh, Green made a real excellent turn answer to stand up, and he's been able to do that. There's. Uh, Cotton going back to that uh, wizard move. It's called the Japanese wizard, but uh, Green's smart enough to counter that. And Green did counter it effectively to the tune of two points on the takedown, and now he has a big 13 to three lead, and that's enough to score some extra points. A very precarious position for yeah, Green. Because uh, his I'll shoulders are closer to the mat than fortunate Cotton's. that he is off the mat at this point. At least part of him is. Part of him still on. And Cotton, now nah, Green. There he goes. Now nah, that's where you're talking about the physical abilities of these wrestlers. Boy, Green really prevailed. A near fall is called. And two more points for Mike Green as he is piling them up. And now we're looking at the possibility of a technical fall here. Okay, here's the takedown. It was initiated by Cotton, uh, the underarm drag. 
and he didn't quite make it around, and Green stayed in with the leg uh, into a high crowd series going behind, securing the two-point takedown. It is now 15 to three, and the riding time is under a minute, so that won't figure at all, and here's Green. Re reversal for uh, Cotton, that could be very important in terms of the scoring here. And here is Green with a, a reversal of his own coming right back and countering, and now he has Cotton in a real tough spot. 10 seconds left. And Green trying to think, what can I do to get his... Uh, Might just sit it out. Uh, he may <laughs> indeed do just that, 17 to five. That would be a 12 point advantage as Mike Green wins it convincingly 17 to 5 and in the process Northern Illinois picks up a total of five points they pick up two extra points due to the margin okay here we see the uh, reversal Green had his hips a little by bit too high in a turn and not quite being away by Green and now Cotton is going to attempt to throw from a bear hug. Uh, he does need to get some back points here to get a fall to terminate the match in his favor, and uh, he just didn't have it set up properly. And Green had a hand on his leg, I noticed, too. Uh, when uh, Cotton was trying to throw him, Green had that hand on his leg, and that certainly would impede the ability to throw. He was and going for the turn, just could not get it. Yeah. Well, so the 158-pound glass goes convincingly to Mike Green. As uh, he defeats E.C. Cotton, we go to the 167 pounders now. We'll see a freshman for Northern Illinois by the name of Pete DeRose from Highland Park, Illinois. Coach Dan Wisniewski there, his head coach, uh, Tim Cazzato, and wrestling at 167, a junior for uh, Illinois State. He has a 2-3-1 and one record on the year. That's a look at uh, DeRose right there. So he's getting a chance to wrestle here. And here comes Cazzato onto the uh, mat. So 167 pounds. Our score, it's, I thought it was 17 to 6, but they, the board shows 80. Maybe he got 6 uh, points. Maybe there was an extra point figured in there I was not aware of, but yeah, it was a 5 to nothing. Uh, so that would make it. Uh, should be 17. Yeah, seven, yeah, that's what I thought, too. All right, so we're underway here. You got it right, Bill. All right. Well, I, there are nights when I do. That's why I double check. the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see who gets the advantage. You see uh, DeRoe is changing his level frequent here, frequently here. He is the shorter wrestler of these two. Tim Cazada has had some problems with his shoulders. He had a shoulder separation, so yeah. let's we'll see how he works. And he's just coming back from that. He's been out for a while, so we'll see. Also, his conditioning would be a question here, too, especially as we move later into this match. But DeRose is doing a, a lot in terms of changing his level. Well, they look, they tie up. And they're off the mat, so we'll freeze the, uh, no, excuse me, they were not off the mat. The clock continued to run. No, DeRose just ran back to the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And away they go. Started again. Tie up once again. Sometimes these things get so tied up, it's hard to tell who is the uh, the uh, who is tying up who. Uh, they just get locked up inside each other. They went off the mat. I think they're just feeling too, as far as strength-wise, feeling each other out. That happens quite often with two two wrestlers that are pretty evenly matched as well. Mm -hmm. they're just mm -hmm. as Ann said, trying to feel themselves. A lot of setups going on. Uh, warning against both wrestlers uh, regarding stalling here. And it's 17 remaining in the period. And DeRose drives Casado off of the mat. So they'll go ahead and uh, start from an even position here. Tied up once again, looking for the uh, most vulnerable point of attack. Their hands always moving. Nobody really going for a leg. I think uh, for just a moment, DeRose was thinking about going after a leg and then found himself nearly in trouble of uh, having Cazado catch one of his. He was able to run out of that. A lot of upper body strength right now because neither wrestler looking to use their legs. Well, each, each team, uh, each wrestler scored a point by each having... <laughs> 
stalled uh, the other. That's not especially the way that you want to do it, but that's a clear indicator from our referee tonight, Tom Hennef, that he wants to see a little bit more action than he's seen in this one. So we have a 1-1 tie. I saw Coach Don Flavin get off the bench and shout something to uh, DeRose. And the two wrestlers forced off the mat. It's fairly early to have two cautions and two penalties yeah. against each other. And uh, that could surely work to your disadvantage through the later part of the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. That's a, that a lot of times you look back at something like that and wonder, well, if I had just done this or done that. But uh, you can't go back. Five seconds left. Saw Casado trying to get inside there, but uh, perhaps trying to work his way around a little bit. Two seconds left, and the period is over. And we have a 1-1 tie, as neither wrestler are able to gain much of an advantage, except uh, they were even even in stall points, so you can't say there was any advantage there. Here's one of the first time. And this is very interesting now, Ann. I know, DeRose <laughs> has the advantage, and he takes up. Oh, they're not starting it down. No, they decided to start even. And uh, so they'll go back to uh, what we saw a little earlier here. I'm not sure who had that choice, but... Uh, DeRose did. DeRose did. Regardless, uh, nothing had happened that first period, and uh, they chose to do so again. Casado looks a little bit more active here early. She seems to be changing level more. There he gets the leg. Inside leg attack. And then lost Can't it. keep it. Could not keep it as uh, DeRose was able to kick his way out. By just pumping those legs up and down, put enough pressure on that uh, Casado could not hold the leg. 30 seconds old here in the second period of what is an even match with Tim Cazzato and Pete DeRose will be taking a look at the 177 pound class coming up after this and a stalling point awarded to Illinois State. So now Cazzato has a two to one lead. And a stalling point right back. I believe uh, if I'm correct, the next stalling against either opponent will be two points and then disqualification. <laughs> well, how about that? So now these wrestlers are being encouraged to wrestle. If uh, both wrestlers are simultaneously disqualified, uh, that I would like to see how they score that. Perhaps we'll find out. Going after a double leg that time was DeRose, missed on it, and they were forced off the mat. You don't pick up stalling points in a situation like that if, because it's clear then that uh, DeRose is trying to be the aggressor, trying to make something happen. We could see it very clearly there, and even though he didn't succeed, you don't risk anything that way. You get start to take match control, and that's that's the key. Absolutely, and it's difficult to call the defensive wrestler because he really is mm -hmm. attempting everything he can to not allow that to happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. So let's start again. We have yet to see either of these wrestlers start from the up or down position. Even starting the period, they've started up, both of them. It'll be interesting to see how the third period starts. Gazzato kept his legs away, but he was down on his knees for a little bit, and that's not a good operating policy, but he was able to keep his legs away, so he wasn't vulnerable. 33 seconds left here in the second period. Happy to have Coach, uh, former DeKalb High School coach Wayne Miller here with us tonight, joining in and uh, me to provide some of the expert commentary and some of the holds and everything you're seeing here. Stall. Pete Illinois DeRose. State gets two for the stall this time. DeRose was kind of surprised at that call. He looked back at the official and said, why? <laughs> and now he finds himself in the hole, four to two. So uh, they'll start up once again. Cazado trying to go for the leg. Couldn't get it. Nearly had the ankle. And with that, the second period comes to an end, and it's a four to two score now as Cazado is taking the lead. I think if I were Cazado in this period, I'd want to uh, really be aggressive and uh, mm -hmm. and make uh, uh, DeRose do something. Uh, obviously, the next time a stalling occurs, it'll be disqualification. I, I think that's the process at this, at this point. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. DeRose will be on top. Cazado trying to stand up. Got hand control. He's loose. Got the escape. Nice effort there by Cazado. Boy, he walked right out of that beautifully. As we've seen in all the matches, when the wrestler is taken down, they like to stand up and go for that one-point escape. 
Five to two. And Casado in control. He uh, has the right answers right now, but as we've seen already, that can change in a big, big hurry. There's the takedown. DeRose gets it, and now it's a five to four. Spin DeRose around. DeRose took advantage here. Casado almost got a, got a pin. He did get the pin in the third period at 32 seconds. So DeRose indeed did turn it uh, around in a hurry. Wow. Coach, try it again there. Your microphone was not on. Well, it, it was a front cradle cradle series by uh, uh, DeRose, but Cazado's uh, aggressiveness put himself into that position. Uh, it's unfortunate for uh, Cazado, but that's the way the, the game is played, I guess. Uh, his heads up wrestling by DeRose. And with the six points to add to the total, at 17 to 6. Now I had six more to that, and it's 23 to 6. And uh, Northern Illinois looks like a very, very dominating team right now. They've done a very good job. They had a, I saw a recent match against Northern, uh, against Northwestern, and they had some difficulties, especially in the lower weights, but that's not been the case tonight. Stay tuned in to Sports Vision fans in 1986 for the best in Northern Illinois athletics. Follow XA State and John Major. Guy who they say is having a major impact on this program. Majors undefeated on the year. Just became eligible to wrestle. He had some uh, technical, uh, he was ineligible academically due to technicalities and some transfer credits when he changed majors. And He's ranked sixth in the nation right now, sixth or seventh. Yeah, by amateur wrestling uh, news, which is one of the real authoritative magazines on the sport. He's an outstanding wrestler. He's great quickness, great upper body strength. Cochran's been wrestling really good right now, too. He has a five-match winning streak, and he was out for a while also. He has a skin ailment from the wrestling mats. Yeah. And he just breaks out. Rather unusual, uh, and that, uh, it, the, it seems as if the ailment is triggered by, by just the contact, the constant contact and rubbing with the mat. So he's had a little bit of a problem with that. He's one of the co-captains of this uh, Illinois State team. Goes for the leg dive, didn't get it. But recovers quickly and goes, uh, who has the headlock on who here? Well, it's the underarm series now, but Johnny Major did counter with uh, the front headlock. Tried for the throw, off the mat, off the mat. No scoring on it. That was excellent execution. That was uh, a bear hug to a, a bear hug to a throw. Cochran had a, it was an under and over and Major just took advantage of it. Did a good job. And a headlock this time by uh, Cochran. Trying to tie up Major. Hard to do match if your head is tied up. I think he made that point earlier and indeed Cochran was hanging on for dear life but he did control that head as they went off of the mat. Minute 35 left here in the first period. First period in the at the collegiate level is three minutes in length. The second and third, two minutes. Major. And again, an attempt at the single leg, and he got it high. But Major able to hold his base, nearly got a reversal, uh, got him uh, a takedown on it. There it is. The takedown for Major is Cochran it appeared uh, got himself a little overextended or out of balance and Major took full advantage of it. There's a tilt right here. Yeah. Trying to get some uh, quick tilts. Didn't have him quite in the right position so Major will ride him from the top here. It looked as though he held him for uh, long enough to get two points here. Mm -hmm. Referee has not awarded it yet but he will shortly. Two points. Near ball, NIU. There it is. So Major with four. Boy, it has to be tough taking on a wrestler of this caliber. He is really good. He's one of the best we'll see all year, I'm sure. Cochran trying to walk out of it. No, nope, couldn't get loose. Went off the mat. Couldn't get that. Had everything in order except for the hand control. And uh, Major was able to hold on. So they'll go back and Cochran will be at the disadvantage here in the referee's position. 30 seconds left first period and 
Major has a 4 nothing lead. And Cochran knows that he uh, really uh, uh, bit off an awful lot here in this match at 177. Uh, nope. A little False bit too start. Quick. False start there. Let's see. Uh, Major's going to stand up, and sometimes it's best, I guess, if, if you built up all of that intensity and you're almost locked up, you need to stand up and get away from it a little bit. That's right. I think that uh, the mistake was on the part of uh, Cochran at that point, but uh, Major didn't want that to happen to him, so Cochran yeah. only had to back away from it. There's Cochran working hard. Had one hand loose. Good hand control. Yeah, nice effort as Major's hanging in there. Still has him. And Cochran walked that time. Literally, he was just looking to walk off the mat and thought with 16 seconds left, I'll try it again and see if uh, I can get out. Maybe he picked up a little something this last time because he was nearly free. But a good speed and, and, as Coach said, hand control by Major to keep contact with Cochran. He was a runner-up, uh, Major was, in the outstanding wrestler voting at the MAC Championships last year. He won two matches in the NCAAs. He was a transfer from Northwestern University, so he knows this area very well. Fit in very nicely to the program here. Boy, Major... Almost a reversal. Yeah, Rolled nearly. out of that good. Yeah, and Cochran working hard as the... Uh, Two-point near fall is recorded in Major's favor, and so now he has piled up a six-to-nothing lead here at the end of the first period. Okay, you see the the factor that uh, allows Major to get this tilt point uh, is I'm sure you're going to see how he holds that uh, wrist control and also uses his leg to lift and get some tilt. There you see the right leg. So there you have it. And Major will start in the up position here for the second match with a, a second period of play. Here's Cochran again, trying to keep his legs away and trying to walk out, but kind of lean back while working on his, uh, on getting, regaining hand control at the same time. And they go off of the mat. That's when you can be uh, kind of uh, set up for one of those it's also not a time when you can relax the edge of the mat can be used very effectively and is being done so by John Major at this point yeah he has a six to nothing lead through one period once again Cochran working hard just trying to get his base established can't get that left hand out however as Major goes right back to work on it good trip right there yeah Major using his legs well. Trying to tie up that leg, and but but Cochran trying to uh, separate those legs as much as possible and keep them away from Major. Major had maybe had a little problem with his headgear here. I think he got hit in the mouth. Yeah, it may have been, so he's going to get a little look to see if he's okay. The clock is stopped with a minute 28 here in the second period. Major came out smoking, got a takedown, and then two near falls for a 6 to nothing lead. Cochran nearly was able to get out and get an escape point, but Major was able to hold on to his hand control, and that really held him in good stead here. Yeah, again, Bill, Major knew how to use uh, effectively the entire mat and the edge of the mat as well. He knew when to give him that uh, distance and yet come around behind, out of bounds, and uh, not giving up any points. Cochran's moving. Smart wrestler. Cochran's yeah. moving while he's getting a stand up and he's getting up there, but Major's just so strong, he's, a as you said, able to really control him on the mat. Yeah, Cochran is no slouch. These are both seniors. They've been around a while. They know the game. They're both very intelligent wrestlers. Cochran again trying to stand up out of it, but driven right back down by Major, who nearly was flipped. Cochran. Going for a tilt. Can't get it quite. Uh, and Cochran, because he's able to move those feet very quickly, was spiraling. able to hold his pace. Spiraling around able to keep himself out of difficulty. Now Major's on top of him and really putting the pressure on him. He's going to try to lock up that right leg a little bit. No, nope, I guess not. Thought he might. And stalling on Major. How about that? And he shook his head a little bit. I was a little surprised to see that myself. He was working for something, but apparently 
I, referee Tom Hennef was not satisfied with what he saw. Yeah, right. I, I would have to agree with Hennef. Uh, Major was uh, just controlling the wrist and not really working a turn and applying a lot of pressure, but not uh, trying to turn his opponent, which uh, obviously is uh, in result of this. That is a warning. No point awarded on that. First time is a warning. Cochran, who nearly in trouble, nearly in big trouble, was able to get back and reestablish his base. But he's finding getting out of that uh, position, escaping to be very, very difficult against Major, who is, seems to have all the right answers. Major again putting the pressure on. Thought about that, uh, that ankle. Now he's got it. Major's using that leg. Tie it up. Wonder what he's heading for. When he, now that leaves you one arm to work on the upper body. That angle started to drive him down, and uh, with that, the uh, period expires as Major was, uh, what would what it appear he was headed for there, Coach? Well, it, here we're going to see it again. Uh, this, this is an awful lot of strength. This matching Major's arm with uh, uh, Cochran's uh, leg, and Major is just lifting it out and pulling it back and trying to get that tilt. It's not a position. The official let him get into it. Only right. backbreaker right there. Correct. So it is still a six to nothing score. Both the uh, wrestlers unable to score any points in the second period. We moved now to the third period and both wrestlers decided to uh, start, to, they took the option of starting in the up position here. Major in the dark trunks, Cochran in the little light blood, red trunks. A little blood right now on Major's face. I don't know whether it's a cut under his cheek or his eye, or, but he's got some blood up there. Yeah, indeed. Illinois State called a point for stalling here, so uh, the warning for each now. There's Major, you can see that it indeed a cut has opened up below the left eye. Now, what's the story on this? Each team, I guess he's just, uh, the referee is just emphasizing that he is, uh, NF is just. He may be emphasizing that Majors is uh, giving a little shove after, after the out of bounds is called. And there is a uh, takedown for Major. And, oh, he drives him down hard, lift at him and throw him. That makes it eight to nothing with that takedown. And Cochran is finding that his visit to DeKalb, Illinois has not been very pleasant in the first uh, six minutes of this match. And Definitely has been a very active match. Here we go, Major is up behind. And he's going to do a oh. just a, a drop. Uh, you have to be careful in that situation. It could be called a slam. You, yep. you want to end up uh, from your hips or legs first hitting the mat. You notice Major's feet, too, though, how he was able to control Cochran. Cochran had to take some little steps because Major's was using his feet to confine him. That was a very good observation. He, Major's was keeping his feet underneath him as well, so he could lift. Cochran again trying to get his base established here, but he looks again in a pretty tough way as Major trying to get around on him a little bit. He has an eight to nothing lead and the writing time is overwhelmingly in his favor. So really it's nine to nothing here as he'll get a point for writing time. Cochran's only hope is for a pin. That's about it. And in that, he isn't going to do much pinning in that position. He just has been unable to escape this really this entire match. Yeah, he's been kind of overwhelmed by Major. He certainly put forth the effort. Yeah, he really has stalling points awarded here. A point for uh, Major. Cochran called for a stall. Boy, he really, he really ha had a load to handle. And so the final score in this match will be 10 to nothing when you add in the riding time of a point as Major twirled a shutout and looked very impressive in doing so in the process. It is uh, an extra point uh, awarded to the dual meet score, which is now, with it being 23 to six earlier, is now advanced to uh, 27 to six. And that's where we stand right now. Sports Vision is your ticket to exciting college basketball action beside the Huskies and the high flying. Been impressive here tonight. Steve Cernich and Mike Carpenter. Carpenter, a very deliberate wrestler. Wayne Miller, I think you are a little bit familiar with this guy. Yes, I am. I, he was a very nice young man. I had the opportunity to coach him for uh, a 
couple years in high school. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of wrestling background. He started as a freshman. Uh, most of the kids that came up through the program at that time uh, had been wrestling four to five years uh, through junior high school and park board wrestling. Well, he became a very good one for you at DeKalb High School, and he, really, he's kind of a Horatio Alger story. He's, he's one of these guys who proves the worth of a lot of hard work. And a lot of heart, really. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure he has all the athletic ability that a John Major has. But, yeah, uh, yeah, he's not really bl naturally blessed for this sport, but right. he's hung in there and learned it. And uh, he does things in a technically precise way and takes full advantage. He has a lot of low-scoring matches, a lot of them like this one we've seen thus far. And they say Cernich is a lot better than his record. He came in at 5-9, and nine, senior, and suffered a broken hand. the edge of the map. <coughs> Minute 50 remaining here in the first period. Am I to understand that Cernich is only a sophomore? Yes, he is. I was talking to Coach oh. Girardi earlier, and he was saying that's one of the disadvantages. That his team is so young, he only does, has one senior, and that was Cochran, who we just saw. And also the fact that Cernich is just coming off a broken hand. Yeah, and So he, he's working himself into shape, too. And he wrestled in the heavyweight class for a while, out of Good condition throw. because they needed him so quickly. Cernich gets two points for a takedown here. That was a very good move. It was an arm drag, and uh, Cernich went behind, picked the leg up, uh, got a nice trip. Get a look at this again right here. There he's got the leg. He secured the leg with up. a drag, stands. Uh, what he did is take Mike's uh, uh, support leg off the mat and was able to take him down from that point. Good lift. And so the uh, Cernich will have the uh, position of advantage here. And Carpenter will have to try to figure his way out of this. And it will not come easily for this young man. Local boy makes good. He's done very well. He came in with a 7-5-0 record. He eked out a victory uh, in... Uh, a match against Northwestern, if I remember correctly. And uh, Carpenter cautioned for a stall here as he was caught on his belly. Now tries to get back into a position and immediately is broken down by Cernich once again. Again, he's caught on his belly, but the fact that he was just trying to mm -hmm. get some hand control, it just wasn't able to work. He couldn't get his knees up, and that's where the official called it. Pretty tough spot. And Cernich uh, working that advantage now down to 30 seconds left here in the first period. Cernich is applying an awful lot of pressure, but what uh, Mike has to do is get his knees up underneath him first rather than coming up from the from his upper body. Uh, that's where all the pressure is, and you have to get that center of gravity back. Well, Cernich gets a point, uh, is awarded a point for uh, Carpenter stalling. Down to six seconds left. And Carpenter just trying to hang in there. Cernich looking for an angle of attack here, and the first period comes to an end, and Carpenter is in a three-point hole. So uh, the takedown by Cernich and then a stalling point awarded and a three-to-nothing lead through one. Carpenter has held his own against some very strong competition. A lot of good, good wrestlers, really good wrestlers in the 190-pound class. And uh, he's a guy who just, he, he was never a dominating wrestler. He had to earn his place out here at 190 pounds. The reversal or the uh, escape for Cernich. Good quick move by Cernich. Car Carpenter was not able to get a hold of his ankle and control him. So Cernich able to twist his way out of it. Carpenter trying to go for the leg, single leg. Looking to get outside on him a little bit. The eyes, always watching the eyes of the opponent. And there's Carpenter going and didn't get it. Cernich was able to spread out. There he has it. And uh, well, Carpenter had good hand control. He grabbed Cernich's hand, but there was just ran out of mat. 
If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, and that's what happens. So they'll start up even here. And as you've seen, uh, the first move oftentimes does not secure the, the takedown or the, the move that you're trying to get, so it must be done with a follow-up. Mm -hmm. What she did, he just ran out of real estate very simply. The two wrestlers tie up. Now Cernich tries to go for a leg. And recovers. Boy, for a moment there, he had a knee on the mat. He looked very vulnerable, but Carpenter unable to capitalize on it. So they'll go at it again. Watch from ground level here. You get a real good view as these wrestlers set up. Once again, Carpenter trying to go underneath. Doesn't seem as if we've seen quite as many, well now, just as I say that, uh, Cernich changed levels and trying to go for the leg, but it seems as if these two wrestlers have been tied up a lot more. Seven seconds left here in the second period. Carpenter missed that time. Uh, a warning and a, uh, a point given on stall to uh, Carpenter, as Cernich was called for a stall, so now Carpenter has his first point, and we have a four to one uh, match going through two periods. It well, doesn't look like there's much action, mm -hmm. and I think the official notices that by both wrestlers, and he just, I think they're both looking to get something, but they just can't get underneath one another. And Carpenter's arsenal is such that when he gets behind early, he does not have an easy time, does he? It's no, not at all, he yeah. doesn't. Uh, he's overextended himself at this point. Uh, and he suddenly become concerned too much with setups, and when you're behind by four, or really five points with riding time, uh, yes. you can't afford uh, the waste of time setting moves up. And I'm, I don't mean to be critical of Mike or anything, but oh, no. uh, he does need to, to get to a little more aggressive at this point. A lot of times he will be called for stalling, and that's right. what's happening again. And we just heard it right there. Cernich gets an extra point, so now it is a five-point lead at five. It's six to one, really, when we threw, uh, figure in the stall, the uh, uh, riding time, which is now in excess of two minutes, so there will be riding time awarded in this match. We're down to a minute 15 left in the third period, and Mike Carpenter is having a very, very tough time here tonight. Well, especially in this position, too, he needs to get into a tough position where his knees are up and his head's up instead of flat on the mat. Well, there he tried to pull his knees forward for a moment, and then, uh, but then uh, Cernich was able to drive him a little bit. And Cernich is really controlling that ankle, too. He's stepping right down on it, pinching it. Not easy for him to bring that one leg, that right leg you referred to, and not easy for him to bring that leg up. 43 seconds. And as we talk about the things that Carpenter should be doing, uh, it's very obvious that Cernich is not allowing him to do those things. So Cernich is uh, the dominant wrestler. Two point stalling awarded here too, Coach. So it is now a seven to one lead. And now the possibility exists with 25 seconds left that Cernich, should he score again, that would increase the total dual meet score that he would get. He already has a seven point lead if you figure in riding time here and could go for more. Seven to one our score, but there'll be another point added onto this. And if he's able to score any more, that'll increase the uh, dual meet scores that he gets above the three point minimum margin here. Carpenter, I don't know how he's gonna try to get out of that. He sure didn't get anywhere as far as standing up goes. Cernich is doing a good job on his leg, too, keeping it down, pinching it. Is it tilt? Oh, he has him in trouble, real trouble. I think he was over long enough to get some points here. And there it is. A near fall, two points. And this match comes to an end, and it's a big, big win for Cernich. He certainly controlled the match, though. There was very little doubt. No doubt about that. He came right in, rolled up his sleeves, and did what he had to do. 10-1 to 1 the final. And so we will be back as we'll be having the big heavyweights coming up here in a few moments. So stick with us right here on Sports Vision. Find a commanding 27-10 to 10 lead. The actual outcome of the dual meet is no longer in doubt. It's Northern has controlled the great majority of the matches here. But we do have the big heavyweights coming out. We'll see Big Daryl Crouch. He is a fourth-year junior. A football player, an offensive tackle, two-year starter, and he'll be wrestling 
big Noah Tyree he weighs in at about 280, 85 pounds, trying to work his way back into shape. He stands just 5'9", does Noah, and he's 1-3. and three. Both of these wrestlers have only one win on the year, so they have to be thinking opportunity is knocking for one of them. Daryl Crouch, this is his first year as a wrestler. He has freshman eligibility, even though he's a junior. He's a football player, played offensive tackle for the last two years for Illinois State, so... This is a new sport for him. And Crouch showing a lot of moves, a lot of feints here. Uh, the two big guys lock arms. That's really interesting, and it's not often you find someone just starting the sport no. once they get into college. Yeah. Especially that late, really. you would think maybe the first year, but as a junior coming in. But the thing is, George Girardi is just so short on wrestlers. Noah and Tyree going for the leg. I was just saying, he, he came out to help out the team. These two guys off to a pretty active start. Tyree is very low, uh, built very low to the ground, Coach. Does this help him or hinder him? In terms no, I of think it helps him in a, in a lot of cases. And uh, we might see him, it allows him to get the legs, uh, control the legs, or even do some throws, some upper body throws, uh -huh. which he's doing right there. Oh, my goodness, what a throw. Wow, Tyree took him over for the two-point takedown. Just as you said it, he had him set up to be underneath uh, uh, Crouch, and uh, Crouch obviously didn't know that was going to come to him. And that shows his inexperience, right. too. Even it's though Tyree is out of shape right now, he's a junior, he's been was fourth in the MAC conference last year. Uh, if Tyree were to lean a little bit back and lift the head, uh, it's going to be over here very shortly. Yeah, he's going for the pin. That's a lot of weight, though. Oh, well, I'll say Crouch is really in a difficult yeah. spot. Right here, Crouch is continuing to fight it. He doesn't have his shoulders over enough that the points are starting to pile up, but the writing time certainly is. Crouch is able to lock his hands right there and avoid that pin. Tyree gets on nice top. Nice move by Tyree. Yeah, very nice step over. And that's it. That's it. It took a minute and 32 seconds. Or excuse me, a minute 42 seconds as Noah Tyree with a pin. And with that, this uh, dual meet comes to a conclusion. But we're going to watch this again. It's, it's fun to watch the big guys. Okay, going in. This is an excellent move. It's really being set up by, uh, by Crouch because he's coming, he's being aggressive and walking right into a turn, a headlock and a turn. By